Hello everybody and welcome back to Tekkit and you join me here in the wet and wonderful world of my jungle um, desert jung jungle desert world, whatever it might be and as you can see I've got two massive quarries so these are two 64x64 64 64 quarries destroying this world and I've already had three running or three run although this appears to be showing me that there's actual ground here but there actually isn't um, that appears to be a graphical glitch. So we have, there we go, a lot and lot of ground dug up from this world. Now this particular world is, or was, or has been, a dense ores world. So it's super productive as far as resources are concerned. And obviously three, whoops, that was nearly very bad. Three 64 by 64 quarries have given me absolute tons of resources so if I go to my resource monitors we have 14,000 iron not very much copper or silver plenty of tin sorry lead and tin uh, plenty of silver plenty of gold so we've been doing quite well now the reason we've been looking to stock up actually what was that number I just saw my redstone there 31,000 found some junk as well the reason we've been stocking up on this is because of my secret moon-based project. So let's head up to the moon. And you saw that we had, at the end of the last episode, a new structure. Now, this is a very misleading structure because this is actually not the structure itself. It's simply the entrance. So we've got, and I fixed a problem with my quantum link chamber. Um, I didn't realize that there was such quite a high power demand for it. So it now has a lot of power being fed. So here we are in my new extension. As you can see, actually, it's a tunnel into the ground. Now, it's an underground laboratory, sort of. And I've dug out the tunnel, and I've built myself a moon-based fusion reactor. And I've improved from my previous design because I identified that the glass doesn't boil water, but the electromagnets do. So if I replace all of the glass components with electromagnetic magnets, I can place water everywhere and then place fans absolutely everywhere. And so I'm generating a huge quantity of power on the moon by having my fusion reactor up here. And obviously, if anything goes wrong, it's on the moon. Who really cares? But that brings us to this area, this seemingly strange square cube that we built. Square cube, not square cube, square tunnel. So for this project, we are going to need an absolute crap ton of pistons, which I already have, more electromagnets than life itself. So if we start with 192, so this is a ridiculously expensive resource rise, this project. Uh, we're actually going to probably need at least another... 128 because we need effectively a lot of glass as well or electromagnetic glass as it is because what we are going to be looking at doing today is building a particle accelerator and I've just given myself 64 of them good old bloody cheat mode stop doing things and setting up my test world and making my tutorial world all effective and then forgetting I've done it anyway let's try that again Particle accelerator. So it's steel plates, elite circuits, and a piston. So we should be able to make all of these very easily. Um, because I believe I have them all craftable. So I'll make four of them. And then we can make. Oh no, my steel's about to. Uh... Oh no, we should be right. I know. So let's craft 10 of them because we can make it make steel. So that's that. Sorted. So we have a particle accelerator. Now this is going to be quite 
quite a labour intensive build because this is quite a ridiculously sized project. So basically what we need to do is take the electromagnetic glass and electromagnetic glass forms the centre along the bottom. Now you'll see when we get to the other end I've been quite sneaky and I knew how big it was so what I've done is built half of it already. So this is someone when I was researching this particular piece of equipment someone said on um, on their own video when they were trying to create one that this is the sort of thing that no one would ever be able to create legitimately because it's too labor and too re too labor and too resource intensive so that almost egged me on to say go on build one completely from scratch legitimately within your world so as you've seen I've got no problems with resources so therefore this is going to be a completely legit, ridiculously giant particle accelerator built on the moon. Because obviously, the lack of gravity of the moon surely is only going to be helpful when it comes to accelerating particles. I'd imagine, not being a particle physicist, I would not know all of the ins and outs, but we shall see. That's not what I wanted to click. Come back. There we go. So let's get oops, as much of this built as we can. As fast as we can. I think I may have underestimated how many electromagnets I need. So each this is a thirty by thirty particle accelerator. Now see each side has 34, no 32 because it goes one over doesn't it, one over each end is 32, so each row of this is 32, so I have massively underestimated how many electromagnets I'm going to need. Luckily, they're pretty damn easy to make, they're just iron and pistons. So that's that side done. Now what the, what the particle accelerator will do when we turn it on, based on my previous experiences uh, and my testing in my testing world, mostly what the particle accelerator will do is crash my game because it appears to be a little bit glitchy. So I'm not overly uh, expecting this to go brilliantly first time. I'm expecting it to have quite a few teasing problems um, teething, not teasing. It's not going to have. Any, it's going to tease me, but it's not going to. That's not what I meant. So we got quite close with the ones I had. So we built one side, just about. We now need to go and make some more. I need to move my field generator at some point in the future. It's worth seeing how many pistons we've got. It's worth building the pistons separately from the um, electromagnets because actually it turns out that if you try and build electromagnets without any pistons, it will build them each individually. So it'll build one piston, it'll build one electromagnet, etc., which is obviously annoying. Um, so. If we build them like this, it builds them much quicker, much more effectively. So how much more electromagnetic glass do I think I'm going to need? Is that going to be enough? Probably not. I should perhaps have built some sort of wireless connection. Oh, I was half off. I've also successfully managed to fix my mouse, and I'm going to say it now, it's going to break again. Fix my mouse double clicking problem that was happening before. Um, apparently, it's a long term known problem with basically every mouse that exists in the whole world that eventually it will break. So, the normal solution is to just buy a new mouse. Um, but 
with a little bit of techno wizardry and configuration I was able to delay the double clicking of my mouse by enough so that basically no matter how hard I try I can't accidentally double click my mouse anymore so that's good doesn't actually require any level of skill on my part it's a configuration within the Windows mouse point settings but it's all about finding the right level so it's still functional and not ultimately annoying so how many more have I got? I've not got anywhere near enough electromagnets come on keep it coming So this is, as you can probably see by the size and the reasonable number of resources, a pretty solid end game mechanic. There's not really much chance you're going to be building this in uh, episode 2 or episode 3 of uh, a legit Let's Play. But um, here we are in episode 65 and clearly it's time for, time for the big guns. So we'll be able to use this to get some antimatter. And once we have the antimatter, I don't really know what I'm going to do with it because I'm not playing on a server, so there's not really much threat to my life from other people, so therefore there's no sort of nuclear arms race. I've got two more rows to build, haven't I? Just go for 64. So I'm not really building any sort of antimatter bombs in order to, th to sort of threaten my uh, potential enemies. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Like I said, based on my testing, I don't really think this is going to work. I think mostly I'm going to have it. I can then contact the person who said it was impossible and say, look, done it, just to prove you wrong. And that'll be about it, because until perhaps the next update... Don't tell me I've run again! Right, how many do I need? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. God... I'm going to have forgotten one piece of glass and that's going to annoy me that I've just put it back. Oh, it's finished. Let's just double check that I haven't missed anything. So we've got magnets on both sides. Glass all the way around. A solid, solid path. I didn't really need to make eight, I could have made seven, so I need to take this one out. So I can see through the path now. Place this into here, and we get the interface. So we have a velocity, its current status, and its power, and how much antimatter it has produced. So we need to give it power. Oops. So obviously we need to take power directly from our reactor. It's gonna, I did hopefully try and get this to line up like absolutely perfectly. It was part of the aesthetics of digging out this room. So we should now have power. Yep, so it has power. So we need a few more resources. So for our resources, what we need is some empty cells. So we'll just grab a load of these. It keeps making more because it's keep making them for deuterium. We also need something to basically uh, accelerate. Whoops. Now, I don't really know what you can and can't and shouldn't use. I don't know if, for example, if you put iron in there, is that going to do more than let's say ice or dirt or stone or diamonds or my matter balls is there something that i can use there's no there's no really obvious indication or crystal 
Can we put something cool in there and get a better result? So because I've got so much of it, I'm going to put lapis in there just because I want to see what happens. Okay. So, put the empty cell in here. It gets converted into antimatter if it goes in there. We then put our... Oh, nothing happened. Our lapis in there. Have I missed something? I think I have. I think the one thing that I've missed is that I need some method of turning it on. So I need a very simple lever. And with this lever, if I stick it on the wall here. I've got lapis. Switch it on. It's off. Whoops. So there goes a particle. And that will now travel around. Oh, it's got such a cool noise. It will now start to travel around the particle accelerator. Increasing in speed as it goes. Increasing in noise as well. That's so cool. I do like that noise. And then if we have a look at this in here. So it tells us it's accelerating. And when that gets to 100%, it has a chance of producing antimatter. So it comes around again. So we can watch this if we want to, we don't really need to. Um, but the jumping on the moon is, is quite annoying. So here it comes. Oh, that's such a sweet noise. Ah, oh, I, I, I like, I want to have this on just with me wherever I go. And it's away. So it's getting faster. And faster. As you can tell, because it's getting faster. So we're probably, what, about 60% now? 65? So just because we can, let's have a look at how much power this is drawing. So the multimeter is something that's going to help us with this. So a particle accelerator is draining exactly 100 Minecraft joules per tick. So luckily we've got a fusion reactor powering it. So there should be no concern over power. As long as we keep... Oh no. Doesn't seem to be able to get any faster. 74, 75, 76, 74, 75, 76. Why is it appear to be stuck? Oh, it's getting faster. It's just hovering. Let's just check that this isn't wavering in any way. It definitely got 100%. Yeah, so it's not got any problems with power. Oh, the noise changed. Oh, it's, oh okay. Okay, it must have a, like a success and failure rate. So it's used two lapis now. This is started again from scratch. Uh, maybe. So maybe it's not guaranteed to reach 100% each time. I don't know. I'm going to be honest. I don't know. So we'll leave this running for a moment and I'll come back to you in a second when perhaps we have something to talk about. So I'll see you guys in a second as I watch this go round and round and round because it's just so cool. Back in a mo. Alright guys, welcome back. So we have maybe run into a slightly small problem with the um, with the particle accelerator. And this is... Um, I'm going to say my fault, but also it's my, no, it's my fault. It's absolutely, totally and completely my fault. So, I misread the instructions on the Atomic Science um, documentation page on the, on the mod, whatever the hell it is, from the author. Now, it says, or it's, it's said... The particle accelerator needs to have um, 30 block radius. Now, obviously, a 30 block radius means that each side is 30 blocks from the center. What I've done is build a particle accelerator that each side is 30 blocks long. So I've just basically built a particle accelerator that's nowhere near 
as big enough as it needs to be. Um, realistically, to be a 30 block radius in a square, each of these sides needs to be 60 blocks long. So my particle accelerator is absolutely tiny by comparison, which will explain why, hard as I try, regardless of what materials I use, each in the cobblestone already, it will not get anywhere close to producing antimatter. So unfortunately, it's going to require quite a lot of additional work. I'm going to have to dig the tunnel. And so annoying because it's so nice. I've spent ages nicely beautifying it. Oh no! I didn't even notice it had done that. Apparently it exploded as well. Well, that's not good. That would explain why it stopped working then. Because apparently it exploded itself. Well, anyway. So I know that I've got a lot of work ahead of me. And I don't particularly want to force you all to watch me build um, the rest of this particle accelerator. So what I will do is I will build it off camera. And then I'll come back in again when we're ready to test it again. Massively depressing. But I'll see you again shortly. Hello everybody again. I just thought I would um, show you how I'm going about expanding my um, my tunnels, just so you can see perhaps the easy way that I've, I've decided to do it, rather than obviously manually digging it all out. So I've set up a load of landmarks within the uh, within the world, and then using the uh, the filler, I'm simply using the glass setup in order to clear all of the area out. And because of the gravity mechanics on the moon, when the um, the filler is is clearing out blocks which hopefully this is doing has got power yet it um it doesn't keep them they disappear and normally you get to keep all the blocks it causes a bit of lag and uh, they all fall but that's because of the gravity it appears to just make them all disappear but it's very rapidly making life a lot easier for me and i'm using the landmarks to uh to help me measure out and plot out my my new size so it needs to be at least 30 block radius. So by making this this the edge where the um, the path is going to be, I'm making sure that we have a 64 by 64. Uh, how the hell did I end up in the wall? 64 by 64 particle accelerator. And as you can see, the filler is now making the tunnel section for me. So that completes my tunnel. Already done this side. We have been having problems with enemies, so I need to expand my um, interdiction matrix. But then use the filler to clear out the two two wide corridors, and then fill them in with the ice blocks, which is I've got obviously a ridiculous abundance of ice. And yeah, we're good to go. So I'll bring you back in again in a minute when we're just finishing up the new particle accelerator. Well, everybody, here we are. It has been the most ridiculously long period of time since I stopped recording. Um, so I started recording this episode thinking I would do a good 25 minute episode at 7 o'clock this evening. It's now exactly 10 p.m. So this is three hours of work in order to complete this ridiculously huge machine. Um, I did some maths and there is a total of 2,048 electromagnets built into this system. That's including electromagnetic glass. Each hand placed, hand crafted, so much so that I ran out of wood to build the pistons, I ran out of cobblestone to build the pistons, I ran out of almost everything, at least at some point, but we're done. Don't know if it's going to work, so we're testing this live. So, I'll go with the lapis again, just because I like the idea of using lapis. Put some of these in here as well. It's got power. Right, let's see what happens. It came on, which is a good sign. I don't know if a hundred is enough. If I put, if I put this here, does that reduce the amount it gets? I still pull in a hundred. Whoops. So this is a 64 by 64 particle accelerator. 
here it comes. So it is working. The question is, does it get to 100%? If this doesn't get to 100%, I might just cry. Oh no, don't start hovering at 70%. That would make me really sad if it's actually worse. So 76 was what we got to last time. We've now hit 80, which is a new record. 84. 85, come on. 86. 90. So it doesn't produce a, a vial of antimatter with every 100%. It produces a small amount of milligrams. So when it hits 100% velocity and it hits its stable, because at the moment it's fluctuating, it will produce a, a, some amount of antimatter. Here it comes. Here it comes. Come on, hit 100%. Wait, six milligrams. So you'll get somewhere... Uh, I think it's somewhere between f sort of zero and fifteen, maybe milligrams, from what I've I've seen on the videos that I watched. But then again, that's different versions. Some are playing volts, some are playing tech it, so there may be some major differences. Um, but in order to get a a sort of cell worth, it needs to get to a hundred and twenty-five milligrams of antimatter. So this is going to have to run again and again and again and again to build up to 125 milligrams over time. So obviously, once again, I am not going to expect you to sit here and watch me get to 125 milligrams. I am going to leave it running while I go and get a few beers because I need them after having done what I've just done. And we'll see how it goes. And we'll come back in to finish the episode, hopefully with a, uh, a cell full of antimatter. Alright guys, you'll not notice, but back in a bit. Well, we're trying to get it to... Oh, there we go. It wasn't working a second ago, but we're about to hit 100%. We should get our 125 milligrams. I was very disappointed on the previous run round, because it didn't It didn't get me at 125, it only got me 124. But boom! There we go. We have now got 125 milligrams of antimatter. Now, this stuff is obviously remarkably difficult to achieve um <laughs> but we have it now something that was mentioned that this is, this is un inherently dangerous so what happens if i just like chuck it now on the moon i don't know if it's gonna it's gonna do anything particularly impressive i did <laughs> so it took me half an hour or so to make it i chucked it on the ground and it exploded so that was uh, that was worth it so there we have it i just wasted tons of my time and my life making a vial of antimatter what is what happens when you chucked it and what happens is it explodes so yeah there we have it the end of this episode the particle accelerator has been built that is ridiculously the most extreme end game machine that exists so before we started this particular build we had 14,000 iron we've now got less than 5,000 so it's it's obviously with the, with the quarries that are ongoing we've pretty much got 10,000 or so iron downstairs and my game has just crashed so that's pretty much a good point then to end the episode minecraft has decided that it does not want to play but nothing much more i can do i hope you enjoyed the episode and i will see you in the next one bye for now guys